We're to now Cabarete. We're leaving Natura Cabana Boutique Hotel and exploring what to do in Cabarete. If you're looking for accommodations in Cabarete, I highly recommend staying at Natura Cabana. Here's a link to our hotel stay. From Natura Cabana, there's a pathway through the forest that leads straight to Encuentro Beach. Cabarete, famously known for kite surfing, is the perfect Caribbean getaway destination for those looking for a little more adventure and edge to their stay in paradise. What makes Cabarete an ideal destination is the mixture of activities available for everyone. You can have a fully relaxed day of spa treatments and yoga, or adventure to the nearby beach for kite surfing and adrenaline-infused water sports. Don't know how to surf? Not a problem. A handful of surfing schools are available to train from beginners to experts. It's actually on my bucket list to hang out in Cabarete for a whole month and learn how to surf. We're continuing our walk and heading to Kite Beach. Kite Beach is about an hour's walk from Encuentro Beach or a 15 minute drive. If you're pressed for time and need to choose one beach to visit, we recommend Kite Beach between the two beaches. We found Kite Beach to be more lively and much better for swimming. Can you see all the kite surfers in the distance? The wind and waves are perfect in Cabarete. Cabarete is one of the world's top seven best countries for kite surfing. Up next, we're stopping for lunch at Papi's restaurant on Kite Beach. Papi's is famous for its delicious seafood among the locals. Perfect. Don't forget to walk around the downtown area in Cabarete. One of my favorite Dominican ice cream chain stores can be found here, Helados Bon. Helados Bon is a staple of Dominican ice cream. Being back at this shop from over 20 years ago filled me with nostalgia. I was born in Santo Domingo and grew up eating Helados Bon. A relaxing activity to add to your stay in Cabarete is going horseback riding. Meet Blondie, my beautiful, willful, and stubborn horse for the day. And this is Moreno, my husband's horse. I highly recommend going on a beach horseback ride at sunset. The weather is better and the sky views are out of this world. We booked our ride at 8 a.m. to avoid the harsh midday sun, but there were morning flies everywhere, so I would avoid early mornings if you could. When booking your ride, you'll have the option of riding on the coastal forest or the beach. We did both, and if I had to choose again, I would opt for horseback riding on the beach. We booked our rides directly from our hotel. Inside the forest, you'll find El Choco National Park, an underground cave system whose use dates back to the Tainos, who were the indigenous peoples of the Dominican Republic. This right here is quicksand, so entering with a tour guide is highly recommended for safety. Plus, you also get to learn about the history of the island. This is our super cool tour guide, about to teach us the materials used by the Tainos for survival. Recuerdas la historia de los Tainos? Más o menos. Bueno, no sé si él, pero los Tainos, que fueron nuestros primeros pobladores en la isla, Ajá. utilizaban algo llamado selva pentandra. Y es este árbol que tenemos aquí. 
lo utilizaban para hacer canoas o botes, ya que es muy resistente al agua y puede llegar a crecer hasta unos 50 metros de altura. Wow. Son más de 160 pies. Además, Bien. puede tener un diámetro de 6 pies de, de anchura, de diámetro. Sí. Además, hoy en día se puede utilizar para elaborar tambores o fósforos. Es increíble eso. ¿no? Muy bonito. Sale una música, a ver. Ah. Wow. Casi, casi. Te toca. <risa> The entrance fee to El Choco National Park is $20 US dollars for tourists and $10 for Dominican residents with ID proof. On a tour, travelers can hike, swim, and explore the underground caves. The average time for visiting the caves is about three hours, and certified divers can explore the dark and deep sweet waters of Cueva Cristal. We're heading now on an adventure. We're traveling to what seems to be the middle of nowhere and searching for a local restaurant with the best seafood in town. The road is rocky, narrow, and not the easiest to navigate. Still, we will travel for food. The journey was long, and we doubted several times if we were going the right way. There were no signs to follow. However, with the help of Google Maps and strangers along the way reassuring us, we kept on going. If you're foodies like us, we highly recommend adding this hidden restaurant to your list of things to do in Cabarete and setting about three to four hours to enjoy the experience fully. This is what your drive will look like. We're heading to a river called Jessica, and from there we're taking a ferry to the restaurant. I told you this was an adventure. We finally made it to Rio Jessica. I got so excited when we finally arrived here. It was the perfect setting, a laid back river with kite surfers doing their thing. If you want to learn kite surfing during your stay in Cabarete, I highly prefer and recommend learning at this river. The waves are calmer and the environment is a bit more controlled than the open sea. Plus, it's right across my favorite place to eat in Cabarete. This trip can easily become a day trip if you add some kite surfing or some lazy river tubing to your day. And we have arrived! Visiting Wilson's restaurant La Boca is a must-do. It was one of the best meals we had in the Dominican Republic. This rustic riverside restaurant offers the best local seafood dishes. Let's go behind the scenes and see how it's all made. We got the opportunity to meet and chat with Wilson the man behind this hidden gem restaurant, and also to learn some cooking tricks along the way. <laughs> this was our delicious meal. With a side of fried eggplant, sweet potatoes, and plantains. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on the Dominican Republic. Till next time.